I got into golf, geez, I was like four or five, and uh, my, my dad built a, uh, in our backyard, I used to grew up in New Britain playing at Stanley Golf Course, mm -hmm. uh, built a net in the backyard, a little homemade net, and just kind of grew up firing balls into the net, and once I was old enough to get a uh, junior membership out at Stanley, it was 75 bucks all summer, sun up uh, to sunset, so I was, uh, I was hooked mm -hmm. once I got swinging. Cinderella man, Cinderella man, Cinderella man, Cinderella man. Played a lot of junior golf in New Britain. Uh, they had some cool junior tournaments out there. Uh, Mountain Dew Tour wasn't as big as it is these days, but I got going in that. I was pretty active. Uh, moved into South Windsor, went to high school at South Windsor, jumped over to uh, Central Connecticut, and uh, Ted Pisk was the pro for, for a million years at Stanley, and when he retired. Uh, Greg Yeomans, PGA professional now. He, took over at Stanley and I was looking for a summer job and we got to talking a couple hours later I ended up uh, signing on as an apprentice with him as an assistant professional with him so uh, that was 2002 mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, 2008 I, uh, spring of 2008 became a PGA professional what I would say if I were to pick one thing uh, is customer service, I mean, especially in this day and age, the golf industry, we can say, still kind of on a decline, idle if anything, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, going the extra mile, that customer service, uh, for me, is, is what uh, keeps people coming back, and, you know, sitting on the other side of the, of the counter, whether you go out to eat or you're shopping somewhere, you know, you, I always pay attention to the customer service, so I want to make sure, you know, I, everybody here, the staff here is, you know, <laughs> We always joke here with uh, with the members. It's almost like cheers. You know, everybody knows each other here. I mean, it's a really unique group of guys and women here. Everybody knows each other, uh, so we have a really good relationship. Not just golf pro member relationship, but we're all friends here. There's golfers out there who maybe can't afford it. There's there's golfers out there who played a lot five, ten years ago who have to work more, can't take as many days off. I mean, that's obviously mm -hmm. the economy, and that's the way things have been in recent years. But um, I think if you can get outside the box of just coming out to play golf, but do some social stuff, get mm -hmm. people on campus, get people at your club, whether mm -hmm. they're, you know, we do these really cool intro to golf clinics for ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an hour on the driving range with them, uh, do some contests, a lot of conversation, and then they come inside, they get a complimentary glass of wine, so we'll get, uh, we'll do about four or five throughout the, the spring and summer season. We'll get 20 to 30 women out here. Oh, wow. Um, so we get them into the restaurant. And they're having a bite to eat. So it's just keeping them here, getting them familiar and comfortable with the atmosphere of being on the golf course. That's so true. Junior camps, too. Uh, kids and women, it seems, uh, beginners or, or players that are new to the game might be a little intimidated mm -hmm. uh, to come out and try it themselves. But if you get them out as a group, bring your friends, bring your, uh, bring your buddies, bring your... Work, lady work friends, mm -hmm. uh, they feel better coming as a group. So we find that to be successful, um, and it's been a home run. We've been doing it for three years now. Great. We get a lot of uh, executive women, Manchester and surrounding towns that come out and do it. Great. We've got a real simple uh, uh, email marketing program we use. With the click of a button, we can get a flyer out to four or five thousand people, and they get the word out. So it's very successful. Cinderella man, Cinderella man, Cinderella man, Cinderella man.